to cast our minds back over the last three years to take stock and assess our performance thus far and to better plot the way forward as we enter and embark on the last lap of the eighth Senate. As you all know, this Senate clocked its third anniversary while we're on break, and given the somber mood of the nation, there was no great celebration. Nonetheless, we had the occasion to get an overview of the considerable achievement of the Senate since its inauguration on June 9, 2015. Indeed, we have come a long way. We have set a new bar in the legislative history of this country. We have passed over 213 bills in this period, surpassing in three years the records of the entire four-year terms of every previous Senate. This is no mean feat, and we, as we hit the home run, therefore, it's important we do not backpedal or slow down. We must intensify our efforts towards doing all that we have sworn to do for the electorate that voted us as their representatives. The distinguished colleagues, you agree with me when I say that the eighth Senate achievement would not have been possible without the support of Nigerians. They gave us the mandate. They trusted us to deliver. The people's confidence in us has been a boon to all our endeavors in this hallowed chamber and has put a spring in our steps regard all legislative activities. With the backing of the people, we've been able to introduce a lot of landmark legislation that has helped in reboosting and recovering the economy, from CAMA to security transactions to credit bureau reporting, all those that have helped in upgrading Nigeria's ranking in the ease of doing business. Other landmark economic bills, including the Nigerian Railway Authority, Nigerian Transport Commission Bill, also the support in the fight against corruption, the passage of bills on mutual assistance, criminal matters bill, witness protection bill, whistleblower protection bill, and recently the Federal Audit Service Commission bill. You will recall that it was the quick intervention of the Eighth National Assembly through the passage of the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit bill that saved Nigeria from being expelled from the global community of the Egmont Group. It was in the life of this Senate that we finally split the autumn, autumn of the once intractable petroleum industry bill after almost two decades in the legislative wilderness. We split the bill into four manageable parts, and not only have we passed the first, the petroleum industry governance bill, we have, we have gone midway in the work on the remaining three bills, the administrative, fiscal, and host community components, which have already been taken up by public hearing stage. The clock is ticking now. We must ensure that we conclude work on the remaining PI bill, bills as soon as possible. Nigerians deserve no less. On our many interventions over the last three years, we have shown that we're a Senate that is responsive to the needs of the people. This is observable in our constitutional amendment bills that we have passed. Particularly among this is not too young to run bill, which received presidential assent on May 31st, 2018, to the wide jubilation around the country. Due to the momentous generation shift is expected to trigger in national leadership. A youth-oriented focus has similarly transformed, informed our engagement with relevant organizations on youth development. We have worked hard to engage and see how we can create more jobs through this. As a people-oriented Senate, we have made major interventions on drug abuse epidemic, afflicting our communities, especially the young demographics. In doing so, we have sparked a national debate about drug abuse. We have drafted two bills that will be coming before us to tackle the problem, namely drug control bill and mental health bill. It is incumbent on us to introduce these bills for legislative process and for us to pass without delay. As among our most transformative achievements, my distinguished colleagues, is the step that we have taken to make health care a right of Nigerians and to put it within the reach of our entire population of 180 million people. This we have done through the setting aside of 1% of the Consolidated Revenue Fund to establish basic health care fund in the just concluded 2018 budget. 
This is grounded on our belief that all Nigerians, no matter their economic status, deserve access to qualitative and affordable health care to make for a stronger Nigeria with healthy and vibrant citizens. Distinguished colleagues, the foregoing represents some of the recap of the journey so far and also in sense map out the challenges ahead of us, which we must face head on. We are resuming plenary today under a pall of national anxiety and apprehension over the state of insecurity in the country. We have been alarmed at the so many senseless killings of Nigerians with a high number of casualties in Plateau State recently. In the wake of the atrocity, I led the Senate delegation to pay a condensed visit to the governor of Plateau State to commiserate with the people of the state. As always, our sympathies are with those who have lost loved ones in this act of barbarity, and we have formed our commitment to ensure peace and security in our country. As you all know, we held the security summit some months back, specifically to address the rising security and work our strategies in collaboration with security agencies in safeguarding Nigerian lives. We have set up the ad hoc committee headed by the leader, and we will take immediately this week the report of that committee and forward the recommendation there as may be appropriate. Events have shown that we are right to take this step in response to security challenges facing the nation at this time. Let me reassure Nigerians that we are as concerned as they are in the face of this challenge, and we continue to hold government accountable in order to see to improvement in this area. In addition to the security summit earlier mentioned, we held briefings with security chiefs in a bid to better understand the problems and we have urged them to table their request for more funds so that the legislature can work on this aspect as well to better equip the security forces to protect lives and property. Through our oversight functions, we can ensure proper utilization of such funds so that we will have full accountability in the management of current security crisis. I must say once again that the responsibility for ensuring security rests with each and every one of us. Issues of criminality are involved in these heinous acts, and the vigilance of our community leaders and average citizen is crucial to assist the security agents to do their job. For us at the Senate, it does seem that issues, it does seem that these issues are also an indication that we might have to take time again to revisit the issue of state police and other changes that are unnecessary and devise a framework for mopping up the millions of light weapons in circulation within our borders. Meanwhile, let me use this opportunity to call for calm on all sides. We have called many times for unity and tolerance. We must remind ourselves of the imperative of peace at this difficult time in our nation. Moderation is needed in our speech and our actions as responsible citizens, even in what we may deem as provocative situations. We must, therefore, all of us, be careful of speech that has the potential to heap, eat up the polity and heighten tensions. We implore the media also to exercise great responsibility in their reporting. Fake news can lead to dire consequences that we can ill afford. Nigeria is the only country we have. Distinguished colleagues, it is clear that internal tensions are also a reflection of the common condition of our citizenry. We therefore be calling on our stakeholders to fast track the outstanding economic bills so that we can pass in order to create the environment that will deepen growth and, de and development. To this end, I call on committees that have not reported on their various mandates to quickly do so, so that we can conclude work on outstanding bills. Happily, the 2018 budget has been signed by the President. We call on the executive to expedite the release of funds for budget implementation so that our people can begin to see the positive impact in their lives. On our part as Senate, we must continue to exercise our oversight functions to ensure successful implementation and value for money. Naturally, we continue to work towards reforming the budget process. Clearly, it is necessary for the executive and legislature to work towards a more robust engagement in need for better budget environment. In closing, my distinguished colleagues, let us maintain the standard we have set for this historic eighth Senate, the remaining work on constitutional review process, the pending concurrence issues, unconcluded bills, especially the three PIB components outstanding, all demand our urgent attention. 
As we inch closer to the 2019 electioneering period, I urge us not to lose focus. The divided attention of the legislature is not in the interest of the country. We must not be distracted. It is incumbent on us, therefore, not to allow politicking get in the way of our first duty to the Nigerian people as centers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. On this note, I charge us all to fasten our seatbelts and power on with the work we have been tasked to do. Posterity is watching, and history will vindicate us if we do the job with diligence and in truth. I thank you, my, my colleagues. Let me also